this would be like a uh, man or somebody with a pink shirt on is coming down the library hallway so that you know then how to kind of direct what you're going to do and make your decisions as opposed to just like that kind of sit and wait and hopefully everything will be all right. So it kind of allows you to be aware like, okay, if somebody's in the library or whatever, we're going to head out this way. So it stands for alert, uh, lockdown is one choice. So it's not saying lockdown is not a choice anymore, but it's um, one of the choices if that's what that teacher or group of people make a decision to do. Um, so inform is that getting over the loudspeaker and kind of informing everybody what's going on or across the hallway. Um, and then C for counter. So that would be if you are in a room it's hard to, you know, it's emotional, but it's the reality of things. So if you are in a room, how to take care if there is an active shooter. And the research, you know, around that, how to, it gives you the tools to kind of um, be able to deal with that. And that's the part where I get really, uh, um, And then evacuate is really one of the most easiest way to um, take care of things. And they found that in um, those situations, those are the kids that survived, that didn't follow that lockdown rule they ran. So, um, and how to run and where to go, and there's like meetup places. And um. so for me, I feel like as a teacher, it was really empowering. And we have a K through eight school, and it's you know you're starting with the little guys, so um, it's not it's done in an emotionally sound way. You know, it's really emotional anyway. But um, so that's what it is. So yeah, if you want to um, share the written information, um, we'd be happy to look at it. Um, it, it seems to me, I had not heard of this, so that's it, it, useful. It seems to me that this is a sort of administrative question of what protocol are we going to use, how are we going to train students and staff. Um, but it, it, if it is, in fact, a board matter, as I mentioned before, it's going to be left to the, to the unified board and um, George and Scott are members of that, so it's important for them to be aware. So, um, so what I can gather from it, it's not super expensive to implement as an online training mm -hmm. and just the low level of it is that beginning of the year teacher training where you're just doing certain hours um, online that gives you kind of just the information and then there is that component of having somebody come in that's trained in it which I feel like was even more helpful in kind of like having those discussions with your you know the other staff and everything so anyway um, yeah I can pass these around well, great. Thank you very much. There's two different pieces. Important topics, for sure. Um, so what, so, do you think it'd be important for me to come to the next, when it's... Do you have an opinion on that, Scott? Yeah. I, I, Scott's the chair of the new board. Yeah, I'm, I'm sort of um, continuing to absorb. I'm interested in this. I don't know if we'll be able to, uh, there will be a, a lot of working through priorities um, over the next few weeks and seeing where we are. So what I can do is just take this and present it at our next regular meeting, which will be the 26th of June of the of the merge board and make my fellow board members aware of it and then we can you know have it as an as an open issue to um, to discuss with the administration during that time and with the new superintendent as well because it's the new superintendent who would have to you know basically implement this one of the Piece of information I saw on there was that if there were was an event and you haven't had all the best practices in place, the, um, you're liable. So, mm -hmm. like, kind of, and it is saying that lockdown is kind of not best practice anymore. It's a piece of the puzzle, mm -hmm. piece of the solution, I guess. So, that was something I didn't know until I looked at this stuff. So, anyway, okay. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you very much. Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right, uh, next up is approval of minutes. So on page three is the minutes from May 1st. Boy, it's been a while since we've been Is there a motion to approve the minutes? Sure. Yeah. 
Chair. Scott, second. I'll second. Carl, any comments? Okay. Good. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Abstention? Thank you very much, Lisa. Yeah. Much appreciated. That's all. Okay, that brings us to 3.1 Student Renewal Energy Renewable Energy Presentation. Uh, Jed Kurtz has requested some time, so welcome. Thank you. Um, my name is Jed Kurtz, and as an independent study, I've decided to get us back on renewable energy after we exited a renewable dam contract a couple years ago. So I did some research, and I found that buying renewable energy credits from an external source is the best option for our school. And I reached out to Green Lantern Solar, here's Victor, and he can tell you more about what they do and uh, tell you how it works. Hi. So here it is. How you doing? I made some uh, copies for you, I don't know how many. As, uh, I don't want to take too much of your time because I know you're probably running late, but um, basically we have entered into deals with schools all around the state of Vermont. Um, there's a reference list, I think, on the last page. I'm going to have to share Sorry, it. Sorry. Sure. Okay. I'll get you one. Okay. okay. So basically, we we permit solar fields off-site from, from schools and municipalities and anywhere in GMP, which I believe all of your schools are in, Green Mountain Power District, and it's basically virtual, so we can put a field anywhere in the Green Mountain Power vicinity and put the credits on your bill. And um, is everybody familiar with net metering in the room? Do I need to go deep into that or some? So net metering is basically we produce credits and renewable energy credits on the fields that we uh, develop, and those renewable energy credits now get retired to the utility to meet their. Um, requirements and the actual credits that we produce get put on a bill and the school pays that bill and keeps a percentage of it so in this case we did look at your bills and you have the ability for 500 kW and with a 10% savings is typical we still have to do a, a little more digging but I'm just going to broad overview you save quite a bit of money over a 20 year period with uh, three five year extensions um, Jed and I have been going back and forth to to see what the best case scenario for the school and we believe that you know no money you know no risk and you get to save money on your bills for 20 years is a pretty good deal um, we have facilities all over we have about 15 megawatts in um, different stages of development right now in green mountain power and vermont electric co-op uh, utility areas so there are opportunities to get placed on them the agreement that we would enter is called the net metering agreement and it is basically a service uh, PPA, if you want to call it, what we call it the net meter agreement. It was uh, uh, authored by the Vermont League, Cities and Towns. Um, so it's a document we've transacted on all over with all different schools and school districts. We just um, have the entire school district, Essex uh, Supervisory Union, signed up for all of their schools with us um, a couple months ago, I think four months ago, three months ago now. So. There's a lot of your, your uh, local schools that are already working with us, and I can give you references and people that I'm sure you talk to and do business with um, that are aware of us and or are saving a, a lot of money. And I, I can go much further, but it's, a, a, it's not a whole conversation. I just want to introduce myself and um, all the hard work Jed has done to, to this point to get to get to uh, understanding of how it works because it's uh, not an easy one the way the state set up the net meter credit system is a, a kind of a, a heady concept because we're not selling power <laughs> we're, we're producing credits and involving third parties to help pay for the systems so if, if there's any questions i can stop there um i can go on and on <laughs> i know you guys just came out you're going through a merger too i see so that's yeah, a, right. a pretty heady you're, subject you're sort of in the same boat as our previous guest you're, you're explaining to a board that's um, about to dissolve yeah right <laughs> but, but there are a couple members that are on the new board and, and you know it's, it's these useful. things take, yeah they take a lot of time and ultimately the, the better the better deal is if, if we can enter the whole new district and see if there's any um you know because the, the the rules for net metering just got changed with the merged districts now you can go up to a megawatt so there's there's definitely more opportunity because of the merger as far as you know what's available but in 
I guess the biggest thing for us is to try and, and Jed's working with uh, the billing to get all the bills for the for the district so that we can crunch through them. I'm teaching him how to how to look at all of that. Um, so it's a great math problem, but it's a it's a very um, it's a tricky one. So ultimately, we would we would love to work with the the new district or or however it's called. I, I don't know how what you guys going to label it. I, the the name I think the name is generally not much liked okay. um, at the moment. So it's going to be six board meetings to come up with a name. <laughs> Probably, yeah. <laughs> so I have a, I have a question. Yeah. Um, do you have any sense of where the solar panels would actually be located? Yeah. So all of our fields right now are in gravel pits, brown fields, <clears throat> um, some rooftops, some parking lot canopies. Um, we pretty much have done it all so far. So. Um, ultimately, it depends on when the school would sign the net meter agreement. Would, it would be paired with whatever the development cycle is of the project that we're actually putting on. At this point, it, it's so early in the process. If you guys said I could have a, a document signed in the month, I could tell you which field okay. today we would put you on. You know, if it, if it did go that fast, that'd be great. We could put you on one immediately. But I, I don't know what your time constraints and how your decision making process goes. So. We don't, we don't really know either. It's a yeah. municipality <laughs> slow kind of process. No, I, I understand um, that. So I, I had just one question for you. We had explored the possibility of having a canopy system over our parking lot. Yep. Now is that? That's is, something we do, yes. Yeah, so you guys work with those kinds of projects as well. Oh, yes, yeah, definitely. And we have the financing. We're an in-state company from Vermont. I went to Mount Mansfield School. I got my daughter's school in uh, uh, Cambridge Elementary is, is uh, net metering off of the Cambridge Town Dome. So, We've done a lot of projects to help schools out. I mean, you'll see the, the list of references. So, so Jed, look, look yeah. at the canopy. Can I, I did. Like, we don't have enough room in our, on our campus to fully support the power usage. We were told that we could do a 500. 500 kW. I can look at it. The, the biggest issue with the canopy systems is the cost per watt. And the, sure. uh, right. it, it's, a, it's a more expensive system. because right, it's got to be out. And Unfortunately for schools, they can't take advantage of the tax credit, so there's no ownership model as far as the school owning. I mean, they can, but it's a, uh, it's, it's tough. The canopies are tough still. No, okay. just, just cost per watt, as far as making projects work. But we're, I'll look at, I'll, if that's where you want to lean towards, I, I could definitely. We look had at done it. some preliminary work on that a year, a little over a year ago. I'll, I'll look at it, model it, for sure. You know, that's another math problem for you, Jim. Yeah. 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 <laughs> It, it sounds like typically these projects are off-site, but I think there is some probably educational value to having them on-site, and if you can you know, protect yourself from the elements at the same time, that sounds nice too. Yeah, certainly, and, and there's definitely some, uh, you know, there's some benefit to having it on-site. Um, the, the liability for, for cars and kids, financing insurance on kids parking under a structure is, is always entertaining, but that's, that's uh, we'll, we'll look at it for sure. Okay. I just have one quick question. Um, so tell me about just the Green Green Lantern Solar itself. Where, where are you guys based? So based out of Waterbury, Vermont. Okay. Um, we're uh, probably, at this point, close to 10 to 15 people, um, and then a bunch of subcontractors. So we're, we're, all, we're all locals. We just did, a, I myself permitted a, a 30 acre, with my brother, um, a 30 acre solar site for Green Mountain Power with a Tesla battery. Uh, so it's one of their microgrid projects that we just uh, are completing right now. So we've we've done everything from from you know a 75 kW to you know a 4.7 megawatt with a, with batteries. So we're we've done quite a bit of uh, work. Uh, we we brought the Albury nuclear missile base. I think my brother and I were the first people to develop that into solar. Um, took a one megawatt up in Lindenville uh, through the Brella program, first solar project to go through a Brella program. So we've done quite a bit of um, heavy lifting and we're doing a lot of landfills too. So it's, a, it's always a, a challenge, permitting challenges, which we, we take on, on point. We, 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 we strive to make, you know, negative sites are harder to work with, but better for people. So to, to not argue against, it's, you know, it just makes sense. So it's, it's a- um, Appropriate use. Yeah, yeah, for, for towns and, and um, places that would never use the land. I mean, the, they, they would just, they're not either allowed to in a lot of town dumps, so it's gonna remain there forever, so why not put solar on top? Okay, well, thank you very much. Yeah, thank you. Appreciate yeah. it, and thank you, Jeff, for yeah. making this connection. Keeping More in common. Con. Yeah. And as far as contact, people on your new board, Scott? Uh, yeah, I'll be 
Okay. Right there. And it's with George. Okay. So. Cool. So then Jed has your contacts. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay. Good. Well, thank you. Cool. Um, that's pretty much it. Yeah. Um, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks so much. Appreciate it. Yeah. Cool. Okay, let's move on. 3.2 proficiency. Have a great night. Yeah, yeah, you should care. Proficiency based graduation requirements, college information. Yes. Who's so, doing this one? Stephen, I remember you had asked this last time. I just told you I would bring you some info. Okay. <laughs> so, um, so, what I brought to you, this is a draft, and I think I've shared, but I'm not 100% sure. This is a draft of the school profile that we're using for um, colleges next year. There's still changes to be made to this. So I keep saying the word draft so that you will hear me enough times to understand that this is a draft. Right? <laughs> and, um, and so this is being set out. We also have a, um, in, in the past I have off, offered a cover letter for some of our kids who've done some other programs that needed their transcripts evaluated. Um, and, uh, and what we've added or what we will have for our kids next year is kind of a blanket uh, letter of recommendation that they can submit with their colleges that just explains that um, the proficiency system became mandatory in Vermont uh, in 2013 for the class of 2020. Um, kind of some general pieces of what it is. Um, and also just some notes to um, any admissions counselor that says that, um, and, and we'll refine this language a little bit more, but that, uh, that there is some early scores tend to be lower than later scores, and that's the product of the proficiency system. As you get better at things, your scores go up. And, um, and so um, we're, we're gonna do that as well as uh, putting in contact information directly. So if you have more questions about this as you're considering our students. Now on top of all of this, um, there are over 70 colleges and universities throughout New England who have already signed on to say that proficiency-based transcripts will not disadvantage kids in any way. This includes big schools like MIT and, and, uh, and some of the Ivies um, in New England. Um, and so, uh, so we've already also vetted that form with some of our college recruiters as they came for a college fair. So they gave us some feedback on it as well, things that would help them as they looked at it. But they said the same things, which is we evaluate a lot of transcripts with a lot of differences on them. And, uh, and if you show that your kids are learning and you show that they're taking um, those that are, the more competitive the school that you apply to, the more competitive your transcript needs to be. So it needs to have um, those higher level AP classes and things like that. Um, and it also, you need to have good SAT scores or ACT scores and you have to have good recommendations. There's no single one thing that gets you into college anymore. There's a, uh, there's a wealth of stuff. Um, but we've also talked to our school counselors and next year they're going to uh, be making a lot more phone calls to recruiters to try to, you know, as kids start saying, here's the college I want to go to, it's just making people aware of what's coming their way so that if they have questions, we get to them before they look at the transcripts and, look, and talk to the kids. And so, so we're gonna make a, we're, that, that's the beginning, that little uh, form is the beginning of the process, but it's just the tip of the iceberg for getting kids into schools next year. So I just kinda wanted you guys to know that we weren't waiting. People already reached out to colleges and we've actually made some calls across the country because we had a couple of kids that said, I'm thinking about like California schools or things like that. And California is not a place that's been thinking about proficiency, uh -huh. and so their response was almost to a person, it's the same. We see a lot of transcripts with a whole lot of different systems, and we evaluate them all as they come. Your school profile will help us understand that. So, good. It's a pretty standard response. Good, good to hear being proactive. Yeah, yeah. Well, I want you guys to know, so when you get questions from you know, community members, like, we're, we're not waiting to see what happens. We're actively pursuing. Yeah, that's great. If I may, please. Um, I've gotten from a number of different sources the, um, the observation that in the first semester of the senior year when uh, students are applying to college, mm -hmm. very often their programs are heavily loaded so that they feel as though they're squeezed in the in the application process, um, as opposed to, you know, in, in, in some schools they, they kind of make space for, uh, they incorporate 
in, in some respects, the college application process into the curriculum mm -hmm. so that, for example, essay writing um, and other, other forms of, of um, getting the application going are, are more um, you know, dovetailed more easily with, with the rest right. of the school requirements. I'm just curious. That's true here. It's true. So, so in, the, um, in the English uh, classes, writing classes, they start some of those college essays. Um, do some of that work, and we also incorporate it into our callbacks, and so the kids are brought in to call back um, with their school counselors to go through some of the process as well. So we try to incorporate some of the process in as well. We're also working on that uh, personalized learning plan document, the checklist um, that came with the the junior, um, there's a junior guide that you get, I can't, I'm sorry, I can't reply. For the English stuff? Well, no, for the college process, there's that, uh, like, uh, college planning guide, I'm sorry, I can't I don't remember what it's called either, but we have like a callback. Your school counselor schedules you to come for a callback, and you go and they go through like a very basic checklist of yep. if you if college is the next step that you want to take, the steps that you should be taking. Right. We're expanding that idea of that checklist because kids that I spoke to were like, this was helpful, you know, like refrigerator helpful kind of stuff for some kids. And um, we thought, why aren't we doing this for multiple pathways in general so early on if a kid in their freshman year says hey I'm thinking about the tech center um, that we actually have oh well here's a good checklist of things that you need to think about now that that will help you then just like in your junior year here's the checklist of things you need to think about towards college we're like oh okay, maybe we need to be developing these more robustly for each of the years because um, that gives both TAs teachers and kids a chance to talk about what do you need to be doing. Gives parents a refrigerator ready uh, checklist if that's what they so desire. Um, and it just, you know, just adds a little more um, communication for that, any of those processes. So if you say that, hey, I'm interested in the pilot program, what does, what should you do early on? If I'm interested in early college, what should I be doing in my freshman and sophomore years? And, um, and making those much more visible. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? Okay, well, thank you. Mm -hmm. Let's move on to 3.3. We've got a letter on page 7 from the uh, teachers of the, how do you pronounce that, Aramis? Aramis Court. Aramis Court. Um, I don't know if people have had a chance to look at it. Was this one that we received via email? Yes, yes. a while ago. Yeah. Yeah. I don't remember exactly the time. It must have been a month ago. Um, so, I don't know if people have thoughts about it. Um, how we might respond in a thoughtful letter and uh, good to hear that perspective. Yeah. Yeah. I get what they're saying. I mean, there's a lot of agreement, right, in terms of what we're trying to accomplish. Yeah. It's um, not like we take the, these um, budgeting decisions lightly. I mean, it's just, but we had, you know, set a, um, a goal to preserve the licensed classroom teachers as the top priority in our budgeting process. <coughs> one way to respond. So based on the population um, that returns in the fall, I, I mean, it, it's there is the possibility that you know, this need arises with a student and <coughs> fill it? Yeah, so, I mean, we know that this changes, that kids move in, you know, in the summer and in the fall, and so, so I mean, first, it's not like it's... The summer one thing first. So, so George is right, we already know of an additional need for next year, and we have to recall one of the people that we already said. So, um, so there is some recall already associated with, um, with the student needs that come in. Um, I think in general what is kind of being lamented is that we've had some paraprofessionals who were not assigned to a particular student but were just what you call a floater yep. um, and th that's not necessarily our best use of uh, personnel when we do have multiple needs um, from our kids who are, are here. Class sizes are in the 20 to 22 student range and so um, you know if we have students that are in there who uh, who do need additional help. Mm -hmm. Bill's been working on this almost constantly in the last yeah. 
Month. Yeah, yeah. So the scenario you described, where we have a paraeducator assigned to a general ed um, environment, yes, they're there um, to support special ed students, but they would be remiss if they weren't helping all students. And the question becomes, is that um, uh, a fair thing to tack on solely onto a special ed budget? And I think uh, that's something that's grown and something that's become more prevalent. And um, but that's for you guys to decide whether or not you know, that's that's a fair expense to attribute solely to a special ed budget when they're helping out in a gen ed environment. Um, uh, so I'd ask you guys to think about that particular question. And then George, he said, yeah, I fully anticipate there's going to be a new family that moves in uh, over the summer. It's a long time between now and the end of August, and um, our needs will definitely change. They've changed every summer I've been here. <coughs> What is the district management council? So the DMG group was hired first by the state, but also some districts to uh, to look at their practices, and um, particularly around special education and, and both spending and funding. Mm -hmm. um, one of their, uh, they came up with several recommendations, and I'm sorry, I can't say those off the top of my head, but um, one, of the, one of the recommendations within it is that um, your students are taught by a highly qualified or, or you know, highly trained individual, and some of our paras are not in that category. Um, they are more for um, for emotional or um, academic support, but they're not necessarily someone who's trained to be a teacher. And so, I and I don't want that to come across as they're not highly qualified people in some areas. So we do have we do have some paraprofessionals who um, who work with students with high need. Um, both uh, physically and, uh, and emotionally, and those people are trained for that particular role. They're not necessarily trained in all the educational roles that uh, that, that student needs. And so, uh, so the DMG group re recommends, and, and I think I, I don't mean to keep stepping on you, but um, one of the things that the DMG group uh, showed was that uh, Vermont has over um, quite some time now, increase the numbers of paraprofessionals who are delivering educational um, uh, or academic teaching to students um, more so than almost any other state in the union. I think we rank yeah pretty much first. the highest. Yeah, yeah. And and why is that? Um, I my own perspective. I think there was an expediency to it. Um, I think that when you look at an individual student's need, that it made some sense at yeah. one point in time to provide them with an adult support that was there constantly. The reimbursement model? Yeah, the, the, oh yeah, the funding model is definitely geared towards that to a certain extent. Right, and, um, and I mean, we, we've adopted the idea that we would rather have a certified teacher delivering the education to the students at, if, as not, you know. Um, but our paraprofessionals are a great help to us for some of our students um, who have the highest needs. Um, but we would prefer to have classroom teachers when at all possible. So here's what I'm thinking that um, to be respectful to respond, thank, thank the teachers, acknowledge where we have agreement, explain our priority in the last round of budgeting, and then say that we'll ask the new unified board to consider the appropriate level of paraprofessional support. Okay. Yeah. That makes sense. Anything to add? I would expect nothing less. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, and I think I mean my my view of it too is given the the transitional nature of everything right now with respect to governance and how the schools are going to be run um, over time, that making additional staffing or sort of significant changes to staffing is probably. Well, there's also some things I, I would point out the advantage of the Unified Union School District in this scenario is in the past when a student has moved from an elementary school to U32 um, with uh, that support and when it's when it's really needed that one to one that position would be removed from the elementary budget and added to our budget to show an increase for us and a decrease for them when that person followed the student between the two. And so some of our budget increases occurred because a student left an elementary school and came to us with the same needs. And that made no sense that our budget would have to increase when the town has really already been paying for it. You know, it so so that, that once we have the unified budget, 
that person just stays on the budget. We don't increase it or decrease it. You don't see the swing. School to right. school. You don't see a school to school swing, which is an advantage. And it's also an advantage when um, we have students who enter and exit the district. We have an employee that can move between schools from an, a student who leaves to a student who comes, no matter which school they're at. And those are things that we were not able to do very good. Okay. It's not easily or not at all. And so, you know. There are some advantages to to the system, and so that's definitely one of them for us. Okay, let's keep moving. Uh, Three point four naming of the U thirty two track. So I first heard about this topic about three years ago, and now that we have an impending new track, I think I noticed the construction. So they're the staging are, already up on the dirt lawn. It's starting to happen. We told them they could have it uh, five minutes after everybody got here at graduation. <laughs> yeah. um, there is a thought to name our new track. And, uh, maybe the best person to have introduced this topic would be Scott Clark. Uh, I'd be happy to. Um, so I, th I think I'm the person bringing it forward because, as well, I'm still a school board member. <laughs> well, perhaps um, I can appreciate how boards operate um, and my thought was what a board instead of hundreds of people and, and bringing in baskets of letters and, and petitions and all that stuff um, to hear more of a single request or a request from a single voice um, and I had talked to Kari and Maybe Scott. I don't know. I talked to a few board members about why now instead of later, and my thinking in bringing it up before this board, while it still existed, was um, that perhaps there would be a better historical perspective. And as we get a new board with new members, and and there are, are members on that board that have uh, no uh, school board experience, and their parents are very young children who are only at the elementary level and may not have a historical uh, knowledge of, and we're talking about Mark Chaplin, have historical knowledge of his um, contributions. Good, yeah. Just of Mark. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So he's been a, a long serving member of um, both the educational and the athletic um, part of U32, um, it would be up to the board if they were considering what different aspects, but from an athletic aspect, um, very highly respected, not just within the school, not just within the state, but yeah, certainly at the New England level as well, and I think probably a lot uh, nationally from the athletes that have gone out. Um, and the timing of a new track, um, it, there are a lot of community members and students um, and, and staff that feel this is a, a worthy recognition of a long-serving, very successful track coach at U32. So that's what my request is. Um, I just want people to understand. I, I, I'm not trying to suggest there's millions of people behind me here. There's, there's, there's a lot of people that are, that are interested that this um, receive due um, consideration of, of what many people feel is a, a, an individual worthy of this type of recognition. Deb, did you come here to speak to this? I, I came here for this issue, so yeah. if I... Did you want to, you want to say something? <laughs> No, I just, I, I just find it astounding that there is a coach at this school who has been doing what he is doing for 45 years. I mean, where, where does this happen anymore? That, that, it feels like that's an old, older model, you know? <laughs> <laughs> so I, I just, I, my son Nathan graduated last year. He went through track and cross country all four years, all since middle school. I have a freshman, Jillian, who's track and cross country. and. Mark's just been an amazing force. He's quieter, it seems, these days, but his dedication and loyalty and 
I mean, at the sports banquet, he was speaking about his statistics going back 45 years on kids and the top kids. He like he has this top 10 list based on stats, and he just was rattling on about it. I just was, <laughs> you've done that. Anyway, I fully support the track being named in honor of Mark Chaplin. Um, he is still with us, and we are lucky to still have him. Agreed. So, what do people think? Discussion. Um, I I love the idea. The the one um, we talked about this on Friday, Kari. Right. My my one I, I, possible addendum is um, Kathy. You can't think of, of Mark without thinking of Kathy Topping. And um, if it would be worth sort of hyphenating the name both because of Kathy's own contributions, which um, for, for the growth side, I think, are significant. I would defer to, to you, Mia. I think Kathy has stepped back more lately. Yeah. Um, but uh, if we're talking history, uh, she was also very much a force and, and uh, a reason why the girls um, track cross country and Nordic programs are are so strong, um, and I, I think it would be nice if if something like that bore the you know bore the names of both a man and a woman mm -hmm. of of distinction. Um, I just throw it out there. I, I'd second that. I when when my son was on track, uh, Kathy was. Although she didn't coach him directly, she was integral to his uh, success in the team as well. It was a very good idea to have them both on there. Yeah, and just, Sam was All-American track? Twice. Yeah. Twice All-American. So this is one of those examples of what you were talking about, Stephen, of you know, national renown for um, athletes coming out of the 32 I mean, I, so I'm not a, a voted-in person representing anyone, but as as an individual, I, I don't think sharing recognition diminishes recognition. Um, so personally, I, I, I don't. You know, if it was if there were 35 <laughs> names on it, then, then it diminishes. But yeah. to to share recognition with a couple of of people that I think. If you asked around within our SU or around the state, you would hear many good things. And I, I can't think of a reason why anyone would, would object to either one of those names being associated with a you know, significant contribution. I, I would, it doesn't bother me if the board wanted to ex, expand on the recognition. I think to another individual. To Kathy, to Kathy. and to Mark. Yeah. yeah, last year, you were, um, I know Stephen made his dramatic en entrance um, at graduation last year. <laughs> but were, were, were you there for, um, for Kathy's speech in which Mark? No, we were still driving. We were still driving. Yeah, was still driving. Driving. Yeah. It, it, was, it was flat out the best graduation speech I have ever heard anywhere, in any domain, um, university, anywhere. Um, it was and it featured Mark. <laughs> well, and it featured Mark. <laughs> <laughs> you know, to say from the two people that are here talking about it, there, there would be no objection no. No. if it was recognizing both of those individuals. Yeah. Well, I mean, when you say a teacher who's been here since the doors have opened has been involved heavily in the Nordic track cross-country programs, you could put either one of those two names in front yeah, of them. That's right. Yeah. I mean, they, they've been integral for this. Um, and if, if I could offer a thought, I would think that either of them, if, if there was a, a choice offered, Mark would say no, it should be named for Kathy. Kathy <laughs> 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 yeah, would say no, it should be named for Mark. Yes. I think that's the type of individuals they are. So, <laughs> so um, 
deserving of those respects as they are. I just have to remind the board that there is no structure here at U32 that's ever been named after a person other than the Shapiro sure. building, but that was actually built by the Shapiro donation. family yeah. and their donation uh, to all of that. I, I'm not against it. Uh, I think it's just something that you should consider as a board. Is this, is this um, precedent? Is this something that, um, you know, that future boards would be looking at as, as some way of saying, okay, this is how we should recognize people. What are the requirements for being recognized? I know these are all silly, stupid questions, but no. I, while there are no two people that are more deserving in this building uh, than those two, I just, I just want us to be clear like why and how and kind of what that process should be. Yeah. And they're also alive, that's the other thing. Yeah. 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 It's not a memorial, right? right. Say everybody yeah. did the right. memorial right. Uh, track. I, so. I was sort of going to speak in that direction. I was going to say, a piece of me is a little tentative about making such a decision here tonight with such a small group of people. There's a piece of me that feels like we could see some, you know, could see some blowback from the larger community. It's like, hey, how come we didn't all get to take part in the track? Mm -hmm. um, that, that said, it's warned. <laughs> <laughs> and that said, given this community's penchant for not naming things, we could easily just end up with the track if we don't do anything. I mean, yeah, I'll point out we are called U32 because the community just never wanted to name are literally yeah. not named. Yeah. So, <laughs> I, I, guess, I guess I don't see any, I don't, I don't see any precedent for anybody really complaining if we put a... <laughs> if we were to take it. It sounds like the new board's going to be focused on a name for the uh, district. Or some so other thing, yeah. yeah. Not the track. Yeah, so, yeah. We were just as soon as this board decided the name of the track. <laughs> As a current member on both boards, um, and having kids in the elementary school, and having absolutely no attachment, um, after you know what I have heard, uh, um, I have no problem with it. I don't think that it's a precedent-setting issue, or you know, we're going to have plaques all over on everything. I doubt it, um, but I would support it. Yeah, no, I think I think if it's going to be named, I think it should be named for two people. Topping Chaplain Track or something like that. Or Chaplain Topping. Or Chaplain Topping. They, they can, we can choose yeah. alphabetical <laughs> order. Height or, 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 yeah. or, or something. Yeah. Actually, right. I'm going to race. That's race right. Each other. <laughs> <laughs> put my money on Mark. I'm like, yeah. yeah. I love Kathy. Yeah. Um, so it sounds, sounds like we're ending um, the discussion portion. Does anyone want to make a motion? May I move that we name the restored track after Mark Chaplin and Kathy Topping as the Chaplin Topping track? Chaplin hyphen Topping? Would that work? Or Chaplin Topping? So I'll figure out the proper, or proper punctuation for that good. situation. Okay, thank you. Yeah, uh, I'll second that. Okay. Everybody clear on what that motion was? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Absent the point. <laughs> <laughs> any, any discussion? Okay, all those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Abstention? Okay, that passes. Well, thank you very much. Um, I was of two minds on bringing this forward. I know there's a lot of work and important things going on. Um, but again, um, they thought it would be appropriate to bring forward because it, it gives a school board a chance to spend some time talking about and being involved with things that I, I think as school board members, part of the reason why we become involved for Absolutely. Community, positive building type work, and it's it's not always you know with our nose to the grindstone and, and trying to solve world. Well, so I appreciate you taking time, and uh, thank you very much. Thank you for bringing yeah. it. Yeah. Nice. Thanks. Okay, so we're at eight 
18, let's um, keep moving. 4.1 reports to the board of Central Vermont Career Center. Nothing to report. <laughs> well done. 4.2, yeah, you have a student report. I do have a student report. Okay, so it's capitalist. Yeah. Um, and so I Everything tends to pile up in the spring. Everything, everything's oh. happening, and all of it is happening. So not necessarily in order, but since May first, we had a lot. So most recently, we had graduation, which was really great. Jim Willis was the guest speaker, and he was great. And the seniors went on their scop field trip kind of thing. Um, we had the Dance Thirty Two performance. Spring day, the eighth graders got back pretty recently from DC, and all the spring sports wrapped up rather quickly. Um, <laughs> uh, the Except tennis for girls, girls tennis. yeah, girls tennis made it the farthest, and they made it all the way to the championships for the first time in girls tennis history. Um, mm. Softball also made history by making it to the semis for the first time. Uh, track boys were also runners up but nobody else made it that far. Um, we also had a move up day on Tuesday and we all went to our classes for next week. Next yeah. year. Next year, that's what I was so <laughs> <fast. laughs> <laughs> like, 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 cool. um, Yeah. Um, then starting Wednesday, we have finals or summited slash projects as proficiencies. Um, all States was in early May. AP exams were also happening in May, and we had prom in May, decision day was recently, and diversity day was on in May too. Wow. Yeah, it's a lot. <laughs> yeah, Last week. Well, actually, I jumped back to the, the um, I was trying to say tech center, but the career center. Career center. Um, they had their award ceremony last uh, Tuesday, and mm -hmm. so we had a few of our students recognized in the award ceremony. That's okay, don't don't. That's, that's not something that a board member goes to. Um, uh, but uh, Lisa LeBlanc and I uh, attended along with the families uh, of our kids. And we, we have the second highest number of kids in the tech center, or the career center, after uh, Spalding. And so uh, it was a good evening as well. We also have awards here. Too. Two different awards there. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Right. Any questions? Well, thank you very much. Thank, thank you for a happy great summer. year. <laughs> and yeah. do we know or Notice that Lucy's not here because yeah. Lucy graduated. Right. So yeah. she, Lucy's off to Smith College. Yes, she is. Yeah. Um, do we know if the new board is going to have student representatives? That's what I was about to ask. Yeah. Have we made right. arrangements to have student rep on so the new board? Discussion has been had. Yep, I'm bringing, I'm bringing kind of the pra practice that we've had in the past for U32 to the board for them to consider. Okay. And so I'll, I'll, you know, I'll give that to you guys on the, my report on whatever night it is. We're doing Tuesday. Yeah. Yeah. No, Wednesday. Wednesday. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Well, as you know, it's been a valuable addition to the No, it's been, board, so. yeah, it's fantastic. Okay. 4.3 administration. you have anything for us? She covered it. Yeah. <laughs> We've been doing some stuff. <laughs> it's, it's been tiring, but it's uh, it's good. We're winding down. Um, Price, so Price. so it, this is this is the number that is is just kind of gives an indication of what this year is like. Our last official day with teachers um, is actually next Wednesday, um, but we have two days of uh, curriculum camp and some training that's after that. Um, Six weeks after that, our new teachers will be arriving for um, for their restorative practice uh, and new teacher orientation. And so this summer is six weeks long uh, for U32. Really? Yeah. yeah. Is that, does that sound like too much? <laughs> no, no. <laughs> so, so, so I think that just to kind of give it, a, you know, we're, we're almost year round <laughs> with a year like this. Yeah. And so uh, I'll be on vacation for three of those six weeks. So uh -huh. sorry I won't be on the phone. <laughs> no email either. Yes. Wonderful. Okay. Any questions? Administration? Well, finance, there was a report in the, the other packet. Um, some questions about that? Talking about fund balance in just a little bit. So why don't we move on to action agenda. We have uh, retirements. I believe there are two: Judy Abiati and Colleen Dunn. Yes. So, 
Is there a motion to accept those? I would move that we accept those two retirements. With thanks. Any seconds? Yeah, with thanks. Second. Scott? Any discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Extension? Okay, so that is approved. And then new hires. Actually, there's a resignation that oh, okay. um, that was not in your packet as okay. well. Um, so we have our one of our uh, P and health teachers, Molly Butts, has accepted a position in Peru, uh, New York, which puts her back in her alma mater. Um, and you can read her letter for the rest of that. But she is she was just hired last week. Was mm -hmm. it just last week? Last week was a long week. Probably have a copy. <laughs> All right. Is there a motion to accept this resolution? So moved. Right. Second. George, any discussion? All those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed <coughs> abstention. All right. So then, new hires on page thirteen. We have Charlotte Pitone. Yes. Right. Okay. She's qualified to be French or Spanish. So a uniquely qualified individual. We, we went out with the hopes because Colleen Dunn's retirement, she taught both French and Spanish. So we posted for both. We ended up with several qualified candidates, which was a welcome surprise for us. Uh, Charlotte uh, has been teaching at Harwood uh, part-time, but she is also, um, her background is she taught French in Spain and Spanish in France um, in her early career. So different times in those two locations. And so her native language is actually French um, with Spanish being her family's, her, her grandparents' language. And then she's of course learned English. And so I'm in awe of people who speak so many languages yeah. so well, yeah. wow. um, but she will be a welcome addition to the school. Well, sounds and, great. And the faculty love her. Really I'm very excited. Huh? Yeah. Yeah. Would you like to make a motion? I will make a motion to approve the hiring of Charlotte Piton. I will second that. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Attention. That passes. So now we're at 5.3 approved resolution for transfer of property. So we had some discussion. In a previous meeting about that, does anyone want to speak to how I think we should handle this? Uh, I, I, I will I refuse to do this. Um, it's, it's denominated ratifying and confirming, which are legal terms of art, meaning that the action has already happened. These are contracts, contract law. You cannot uh, obligate someone to form a contract if they don't so will it. So uh, the, the, the state wishes to take the property from the district. Um, it can go ahead and try to do that. But under no circumstances should we be signing a document under duress, a contract under duress, especially when, and, and, and it's clear to me that uh, the state knows that as well when they nominate this a ratification. So I, uh, I will vote no. I'll vote no too. I will. I will. I will sort of shadow uh, Alan's comments of earlier that I just don't think. I don't think, given the situation, that yeah. it's appropriate for the state to demand that the res that we, as representatives of our localities that may not be happy with this situation, vote to turn this property over to the state. We have Dixon rule here in the state. The, 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 the legislature Dillon. can take the Dillon rule. Yeah. Um, we, you know, we operate under the billing system, and that gives them the authority to grant our power to us as a, as a body. Um, they can they can take the property if they want to and face the legal consequences. I don't think we, as representatives of our localities, need to vote on this. That would be my take on it. So I, I didn't hear in the previous meeting any compelling reason to do it. That I didn't yeah. I didn't hear any negative implication of not doing it. So can you think of one? Well, I, I think, you know, Floor raised the issue of whether there would be liability associated with this, and I, I don't see the liability associated with this. And um, there was also some implication that the AOE may take some action in the event that we don't sign this. Um, I'm perfectly happy to play a game of chicken with the AOE. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Sorry, that's too no, aggressive. No, 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 no
basically, if, if we punt, it just comes, it just goes to the, to the new board. And then... I, I would say, I, I mean, I don't mean to jump in, but the <coughs> new board does not have the authority that's true. Over, over this oh, site. Yeah, um, that's true. So, do you have an insight into none whatsoever? Right. That was my whole. That was my whole insight right there. Yeah. But but I mean, think that, that the, the new board doesn't have control of the property until someone gives them that control. control. Um, right. And so, why would we want to give it away? You know, the thing is, is this is I, honestly it is. I do believe it's angels dancing on the head of the pen because there's a 1914 case from North Troy where the issue rose specifically whether property that was uh, uh, school property uh, was the property of the town or whether it remained uh, property of the school the district or whatever. yeah and it was uh, the court's reasoning uh, was that um, it, it did make, remain school property, not town property. It would support the notion that the state can take, for instance, Romney School from the town of Middlesex. So my suspicion is they can go ahead and do it. They're just in, in the same, I'm sorry to be um, editorializing here, but in the same way that they didn't have the gumption to do what they claimed they wanted to do, but tried to sugarcoat it, they may get it sound as though there was a choice involved when in fact they were just wanting to force merger. I think it's time for our legislators to, um, to grow up. If they want to merge schools, merge them. They'll try they take, to take responsibility us. for they it, not put it on us. No. Exactly. Not hearing a lot of support for taking this action. So. Can I ask a curious question, not in my role, but um, so it's 164 acres here that belongs to the school, right? And it already belongs to all the towns. Exactly. That, that was the next thing I was going to speak to so, also is, yeah, we're all, as the U32 board, we're already a union. And, and this property the is The five already, towns already have yeah, a joint already ownership have, it's over a, it's this kind property. Feels kind of moved and the supervisor for, for our body in particular. It's another thing for Cal's and Doe, you know. But, right. uh, but for us, I don't think it's, I just think it's that big an issue. Yeah. As long as we don't right. risk losing. As long as I, I don't know. Yeah. I, I could say that the question that Floor rose about insurance, I'm sure that there's some devil in detail there, but I don't know that we would be without insurance. That doesn't seem possible if we're paying our premium. Yeah. Right. Right. I mean, that's. Right. Like, as long as, like as, long as you're paying, you're that probably going to get it. But you will let us know. So I, I, find I, out I, yes, <laughs> I would definitely. I, I will look at it. There's also a piece of me that suspects that. Should anything need to, you know, we just get reconvened as the body that is right. currently right. elected to right. be in charge of this property. Yeah. 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 I suppose so. All right, any other comments on this? Does the does school board have subpoena power that we can subpoena like this? <laughs> 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 yeah. 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 Pose and <laughs> subpoena <laughs> him. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I would say that it's on your action agenda item, so you should take action on it. But you. Okay. Right, but I'm just, <laughs> just offering that you probably should hold the vote for okay. it because it is a it's because an action it item. It would be yeah. proper to, to just. I mean, you um, can vote in the negative. You, you you say it in the affirmative, and you can. Right. Is anybody willing to say it in the affirmative? <laughs> no. I, I will raise the I will raise the question. <laughs> um, should we? That's the resolution. Should we, resolution. Should we, what was it worded? Um, the, re the resolution for transfer. Yeah. 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 Should, should we approve the resolution for the transfer of property to the, what is it, to the, to the new WCSUU D. Yep. D. Board. So that's not a motion, but you're um, sort of. Well, that's not. Yeah, I'm calling the question with with that motion sort of built into it. I guess <laughs> you, you've got not to be well, negative. I mean, wh why don't I make the motion, and then if there's not okay. a second, then nothing happens. So I'll make That's the motion that we authorize approve resolution for the transfer of property to the. Is there a second? Okay, so that does does not pass. Let's move on. We dealt with the naming of the track 5.5. Regarding transfer of fund balance, so earlier tonight we heard a recommendation from Lori that we could transfer 
fund balance in excess of 2% of budget as of June 30th to our capital fund. And the implication of not doing that would be what would stay in our fund balance. So, but your fund balance disappears as the fund balance of U32 as of June 30th and of July 1, it would be money that the union, unified union school district can spend as they saw fit. And if you make a motion to put it into the capital fund, it has to stay in the capital fund. And it would be segregated? And yes, each of, the school, each of the schools will have restricted funds that are built for capital that okay. we are gonna try, from what I understand, those, we're gonna continue that process of, of putting money into capital like we have at some of the elementary I think most of the elementary schools now at this point, I just don't know 100%. Does everybody understand the issue? So we want to do this. Yes. Well, actually, I have a question. I, again, it may matter at the elementary school level, you know, Doty's capturing their, uh, by Doty choosing to move their fund balance into the capital fund, they're making sure that, that fund balance stays with their building and in their school. Correct. Right. Again, we're already a unified, our budget's already shared. We're already a unified right. body. So really, for so us, the only question maybe is, a good point for us, you know. do, do we want to restrict this money for capital purposes rather right. than operational right. rights? And, right. Correct. And, and I might argue that that's really up to the new board to decide that. What's the I best might, use of those funds? I might agree, funds? too. Oh, that's good mm -hmm. mm -hmm. So I will say that I had conversations quite some time ago with Bill uh, Kimball about the fact that U32's fund balance is really the fund balance of five towns and that um, the whole unified union school district probably does not need a fund balance in excess of what we have. We haven't touched our fund balance in the five years that I have been here, but it's our contingency fund in case something major happens. Um, that contingency fund of U32 could cover the school district as a whole and allow elementary schools to put their money into their capital funds and preserve it for that. I think that part of the, the, the case that, as I understand it, that, that's here, is that um, there was some chip in from the elementary schools, but not a significant amount. Like it was, you know, they, they weren't having to put too much money into the unified union fund overall. But I think it's up to you guys as a whole. Do you want to move, do you want to preserve that money for our capital fund? Um, at U32, or do you want to allow the new uh, Unified Union School District to determine how those funds are, are allocated? And that's, that's your choice. That's, that's the question. Yeah. George or Scott, do you have an opinion on this? Not really. I think we're going to be pretty tight-fisted in terms of um, being generous. How can you be tight-fisted? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Scott, I mean, you're I mean, taking over a new board. The question is whether you want a bigger hunk of money or a smaller hunk of money. It's not that hard. Does it help you in some way to restrict that to capital spending? Um, you know, have maximum I don't, flexibility. I think if we have flexibility, we'll probably wind up using it for capital spending anyway. Okay. Um, so it, it's probably... You know, six of one and a half dozen of another. No. I guess my last question would be, is Lori going to be mad at us if we do this wrong? <laughs> <laughs> no, no she will not. I will break the news to her. Okay. It's, and, it's not, and it's not bad news. I think I, we, we don't have to be that generous, but it is the tax money from the five towns right. already. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's the one place where we can actually be a little magnanimous around mm -hmm what's happening as the, as the whole because it's already the taxpayer's money. Mm -hmm. yeah. Good. And so, that's up to you guys. So, so do we need to move? move well, we can, it's on the action agenda, so. So in a non-negative way, huh? Positively, we leave the fund balance as is. Okay. <clears throat> is that I'll second really? that. Well. We're going to leave it as it. You're saying we leave it as is. Yes. That's a positive action. Yeah, I'll second that. Okay. So there is a motion to leave the fund balance as it is. <laughs> Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Abstention? Okay, so that passes. Can I ask a question? Sorry. Does it, does it matter if it delineates between capital fund and what is the other? We're, we're saying we're going to leave Just the, leave the fund. operating fund they're, balance. They're technically not moving anything to the capital yeah. fund. Yeah. Okay. Okay. 
Okay, and then we have one more. I don't know if I have the language on this. Uh, do you have something? Oh, I think okay. this is it. You're talking, is this the blanket yeah. authorization? Yes. Yes. Good. Oh, that's good. Yes. Yeah, I got a big packet of stuff. So this is a standard action that we take around this time of year. Correct. Right. Which basically authorizes the school and the treasurer to meet obligations while we're not in, Correct. in right. session, right? Correct. We've, we've done this every year at this time. Yeah. yeah. That said, I would move that we approve the blanket authorization for check orders. Second, I'm working that approval. Does that sound like the right language? Right. <laughs> Whatever's written on there, <laughs> which says blanket authorization. So that was moved and seconded? Yes. Scott? Any discussion? <laughs> All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Is there some verbiage somewhere on that? Or? There's an entire. In the packet. Uh, in front of Kari. Okay. I'm not sure. I don't think it's in the packet. Okay. Let's go around for signatures. Okay, thanks. Board orders? Uh, in front of George. Ah. Was, oh, they have them signed. Oh, there was a food service we have four. item that said morale booster. <laughs> That was that cake? Ice <laughs> <laughs> so we did ice cream sandwiches, um, cookies uh, for right. teachers. Yeah, <laughs> on uh, a couple of our Wednesdays. Nice. Yeah, we. Is there, is there, with the is there a cover pizza? page on that? We can. Make a Here's one. So, I will make a motion that we approve the board orders um, for. The first half of May, in the amount of ninety-three thousand six hundred and sixty-eight dollars and two cents, as well as the second half of May, in the amount of two hundred twenty-three thousand nine hundred seventy-six dollars and thirty-three cents. So second. Second. Any discussion? Questions? All those in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Discussion? So that passes. So, yes, thank you. Next steps for the U32 board. So we just learned that we may be called back if there's a problem with uh, whatever that issue was. I don't even remember now. Trying for the fun balance. Maybe Mark and Kathy can't agree. Yeah. 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 Oh, I'm first. I should go first. I should go first. <laughs> um, other than that, though, we expect that the only outstanding business, unless there is action by the courts, otherwise, would be to come back and review the audit. Correct. Which is typically around October. Uh, uh, closer to December. December. Yep. Um, and that's really all we know at this point? Correct. So everyone should be on sort of on call. <laughs> you know, that December meeting unless something happens sooner. Like I, you would I, move out of district. I, I'm still planning on moving in August, so I will hang in there until early August, I suppose, and then I'll let you know when I'm resigning. In which case, you will become chair, I suppose. <laughs> oh <my God>. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is all part of your multiple hats. <laughs> yeah. Didn't think that went through, did you? No, I didn't. I haven't thought anything through. Um, Will the East Montpelier, how does that work? Will you be replaced? No. I don't, I don't no. think so. There's no, board, there's no board to replace them. <laughs> ah. Remember, the, the way it would work is the elementary board would have appointed That's somebody. Right. That's right. So we'll, we'll just have to operate under a quorum based on the people who are still a part of the board. Okay. Which is why you can be chair. Okay, so it will be important that everybody shows up. For that yes, last or at least four of you. Yeah. Four. Mm -hmm. Which we did pretty well tonight. Yeah. So since this is a uh, semi-historic uh, time, I thought we reserve um, a little bit of time for board comment. If anyone want to like to say anything about anything? It's been great. It's been a pleasure working with y'all. Yeah. I thought Matthew said it really well. I mean, the, the opportunity to serve the community in this way just seems to me sort of a, well, I'll put it this way. I've gotten way more out of it than I've given to it. So. Very appreciative of uh, everyone here, everyone who's not here. Um, and I'll just say thank you. Thank you. 
from us as well. And, and once again, I have to say, it's not over till it's over. <laughs> That's right. That's right. So would you mind from administration? I sure. mean, we want to express our sincere thanks. I know that some of you have been here since the day I was hired. Um, and so you have been an extremely supportive board of what we've done here at U32. And uh, I, I hadn't thought about that till I was writing up my last administrative report, and I realized this is it. And so, or maybe or. not. <laughs> um, and so, uh, but uh, but I, I just thank you guys. Um, you know, throughout the years, you've been so supportive of the students and the faculty and, and administration at U32. It's a, it's been a pleasure to serve you guys. Um, and I want to follow that with a request, which is something that I recognized with the new board. Um, is that we no longer have U32 representation. Um, and so we have, each town has representation, um, and there's both an elementary school and U32 associated with that. And I think that there is a certain amount of helping people see that you know U32 isn't, <coughs> that the elementary schools aren't the only schools, because I know that that's a big part of the discussion, but we've been jointly run for many, many years, and I don't want us to lose that. Uh, feeling and that uh, that piece. I think we got you covered. Yeah, yeah. Two out of the ten. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I, and that's just kind of my request yeah. at that. Yeah, right. Yeah. Don't forget about us. Yeah, I mean, it's a lot of the issues are around the towns, not around the school right now, mm -hmm. and so I just don't want uh, U32 suddenly lost its representation of a board that only fights for U32, as did all of the other elementary schools. But the organization of the structure kind of diminishes that a little bit, I think. Yeah. Interesting. Still half the students, right? Yeah. We are still half the, half the budget, half the students. <laughs> so, the elephant in the room, really. <laughs> Anybody else want to make a comment? Thank you all. Yeah. Yeah, I've, been, I've enjoyed serving with all of you, certainly. I've been here quite a while, and uh, it's been great, and uh, I've enjoyed it a lot. So we'll see what happens with the new the new course, but uh, yeah. So thank you all, and Stephen, thank you. Well, I'm going to be here. Really. No, I know, but I mean, <laughs> you're, I think you're doing a wonderful job. Oh, I think the staff, yeah, thank you. everybody's yeah. doing, the teachers, everybody's doing. We've got a great team here. Yeah. It's a good school, it's a great school, so. And if, if, we've, if we've done well by you, it's because you've made it easy, you've made it possible. It's been a pleasure. Don't be strangers. And then there's this guy, too. Oh. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Thank you, though. It's very coffee, Catherine. They're all the superstitions. Oh, okay. So, so you guys don't leave before starting this up. All right, 9.0, um, board communication. I was gonna suggest that we each write our own towns, whatever we wanna say, um, but perhaps it would be best to wait until after the budget articles vote next week, not so as not to confuse anyone. Uh, yeah, the, the possibilities for co confusion are pretty high. Mm -hmm. I will be gone, so I won't be here to write anything to myself. <laughs> Okay. Um, well, so be it. Did you, would you rather, we write something on your behalf? Or? I, I guess if, as long as you guys all check the box that the town next door yeah. can see your post, yeah. then that does the trick. Okay. okay, sound like a good plan? All right, any other business? And we are adjourned by consensus at 8.45. Thank you, Lisa. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank, thank, you, thank you all. Yeah, that's right. Oh, this is the one. 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 Oh, this is the one.